Good morning. Buenos dias. Thank you very much for joining us today on this Caribbean Tourism Fireworks Session with an update on our upcoming Caribbean Travel Marketplace number 42, scheduled in beautiful Montego Bay, Jamaica for May 20th to the 23rd. My name is Vanessa Ledesma, acting CEO of the Caribbean Hotel and Tourism Association. I'm so glad that you're joining us today and we're coming to you from across the Caribbean um, in Grenada and we have our um, host representatives and our president, joining us live from Kingston, Jamaica. So we're really in the Caribbean today with you. Allow us an opportunity to uh, proceed with the uh, session. And at this point, I would like to introduce the president of the Caribbean Hotel and Tourism Association, Nicola Martin Greg. Morning, everyone. Thank you, Vanessa. And hello to you from Grenada. And hello to everyone from beautiful Jamaica. Honorable Minister Edmund Bartlett, Permanent Secretary and Minister of Tourism, Ben Progressive, Robin Russell, President of the GHT and our Director of Tourism, Donovan White, Executive Director of the GHT, Camille Needham, other tourism officials, ladies and gentlemen, members of the media, good morning. This year marks the 42nd staging of the prestigious and most important public show for the Caribbean GHT marketplace. Since taking office in October 2021, this would be my third time at the helm of hosting Marketplace. In October 2022, we staged this event in person, coming out of the worst worldwide pandemic and faced the aftermath of Hurricane Fiona in Puerto Rico. To show the importance and relevance of this event, even with such strong odds, we had over 700 delegates from 44 countries. This was also the year we launched the first ever CHTA Travel Forum, an event designed to have the Caribbean and international thought leaders discuss reimagining and chart a course for growth and development of Caribbean tourism. We had over 178 attendees at our first forum. In 2023, for the first time ever, we were able to successfully stage CHTA Travel Forum and CHTA Marketplace in Barbados. With just on the 800 delegates in attendance, we were able to showcase the Eastern Caribbean in a new and imaginative way. The Travel Forum also grew in size to 254 delegates. Our collective efforts to market the region through these events such as Caribbean Travel Marketplace and the work of some of the world's best tourism boards, including the one whose office I'm sitting in today, the Jamaica, our hotel associations and individual tourism stakeholders has the Caribbean holding pride of place as the fastest recovering region post pandemic. As we review 2023 worldwide performance based on data from forward fees, the Caribbean recorded an impressive 3% growth over 2019. However, we cannot rest on our laurels and the potential for impressive growth is even more possible with over 59,000 projected new hotel rooms planned or in progress over the next few years, events such as Marketplace must continue to deliver for our region. So this year, as we return to my home island of Jamaica, where Marketplace was last held in 2019, we reaffirm ensuring this event continues to move with the times. As this will be my last Marketplace as president of CHTA, being able to host it in Jamaica has special meaning. This year, we'll be taking the event to a new level with three distinct tracks. The business of tourism in the form of the Caribbean Travel Forum, the marketing of tourism for CHJ Travel Marketplace, and the community of tourism, our first ever Responsible Tourism Day. On May 20th, we'll begin with the Caribbean Travel Forum starting at 9 a.m. at the Montego Bay Convention Center under the theme, Visioning a New Tourism Landscape for the Caribbean. Along with our State of the Industry Address, where we'll share both historical and forecast data from our data partners, our public-private sector panel will focus on the key issues of the region, such as multi-destinational travel, inter-Caribbean travel, with the emphasis on air connectivity, sustainability, technology innovation, labor market, linkages, and other exogenous factors. Our other panels with representatives from the private sector, multilaterals, and other regional bodies will focus on sustainability, technology, and new markets. We will be also having our annual awards luncheon where we will honor the CHDA Hotel of the Year, present the Destination Resilience Award, and the President's Award for Excellence in Caribbean Tourism, 
which I had the honor of presenting last year to our esteemed tourism minister, Edmund Bartlett, who was our very first recipient. I think we still need to give him a round of applause for that one. This event is a paid event, which is open to all delegates and to the general public. So for tourism stakeholders and the wider business community or anyone who has an interest in tourism can attend the travel forum. From May 21st to the 22nd, the iconic CHJ marketplace will take place. This is a closed event, only open to CHDA members, and we are anticipating over 150 buyer companies and over 1,000 delegates. This year, we'll be making a special effort to bring more new buyer delegates, and we have expanded to target buyers from Latin America, Eastern Europe, and Asia. We will also have, for the first time, a complete standalone MICE itinerary with 20 meeting planners attending the first ever CHDA Caribbean MICE exchange. The MICE market has tremendous potential for the region and generated over 900 billion US dollars in 2023 worldwide, and is expected to double that revenue by 2032. It is time for the Caribbean to focus on getting a bigger slice of that very significant pie. Additionally, we plan to have 50 international Caribbean and media, international and Caribbean media representatives on the island to engage with our Caribbean delegates and to share the news of the richness and diversity of our region. Another crucial aspect of this year's marketplace is the first time ever CHT has taken the bold initiative to put together with our Jamaican partners a multi-destination media fam trip to the islands of Dominican Republic, Jamaica, and Cayman. Minister Bartlett, among others, have been championed the issue of multi-destinational travel for the region and he has led the way in this, this road. We at CHD are joining him in that support and we'll be putting together an exclusive trip where five specially invited members of the media will be on a 10 day experience to go and see the depth, beauty, culture and diversity of these Caribbean islands. I would like to thank our partners in the Dominican Republic and Cayman who have readily come on board to join us to create this event. This is a highlight all visitors to the Caribbean, the endless possibilities of visiting not one, but several Caribbean islands as we improve interconnectivity across the region. This, ladies and gentlemen, is only the first step in our ongoing drive to promote multi-destination travel within our region. Last but not least, on Thursday, May 23rd, Delegates will participate in our first ever Responsible Tourism Day, which coincides with Jamaica's Labor Day. A lot of firsts this year we have. We at CHT recognize as the issues of climate change and sustainable development continue to confront us, we must play our part in making and ensuring change. So not only will we talk about the business of tourism, we will market tourism, but we will be responsible stewards for our tourism communities. We have already confirmed three of our projects. One would be done in conjunction with Montego Bay Marine Park, the other with the SOS Children's Village, and the third, I just got the confirmation, will be, Minister, you'll be happy to hear this, an agricultural linkages project with the Tourism Linkages Network, visiting to Crichton Estate, which supplies fruit and vegetables to the tourism industry, and that activity will include planting of fruit trees and harvesting. So our delegates will really have a hands-on experience of linkages. And I want to say again, this has been a big champion of Minister Bartlett and you have inspired us and inspired me as a member of the Linkages Council to include this as part of our activities from CHT Marketplace this year. The other projects we are finalizing will focus on community tourism and supporting women and youth in tourism. This Responsible Tourism Day will become a feature of CHT Marketplace going forward along with our Caribbean Travel Forum. Again, cementing that we are not just about making money, but also giving back to our communities. Ladies and gentlemen, I am more than excited for this year's series of events as we continue to add value and provide an expansive platform for a Caribbean region to conduct business of tourism and be the driving force behind economic development of our region. I must thank our host destination and particularly Honorable Minister Edmund Bartlett for his commitment hard work and leadership in advancing not only Jamaica's tourism fortunes, but that of the entire region. 
ladies and gentlemen, I thank you. Thank you very much, Nicola, for those with that very comprehensive overview of what will be happening during the period of May 20th to the 23rd. With that, we will proceed at this time to invite Minister Edmund Bartlett to provide his remarks on behalf of Jamaica and the Jamaica Tourist Board. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vanessa. Our distinguished partners all. This really gives me immense pride. In fact, Guides a great moment of anticipation for the, this event which is to come. It is not an event in the context of a single activity, but it's an opportunity, a great opportunity for us as a Caribbean people, not just to showcase the strength and power of our assets, but also to provide leadership with innovation. And I'm excited about the overview that um, President Nicola just gave. Because what it spoke to is that the region is now ready to pivot. The region is ready to take a new perspective on itself uh, in this post-COVID era to grow tourism to another level. And um, the three key points that she uh, dealt with, tourism and business, tourism and marketing, but responsible tourism is perhaps at the heart of the innovation that we speak about. How do we as a region transform ourselves into being the go-to destination of the future? It took us 150 years to bring the first billion visitors across the globe. It is projected that in the next 25 years, 1.5 billion more tourists will be traversing the world. Where will they be going? Where will they be coming from? What are the psychographic profiles of those demographics that are now going to emerge? Where will the Caribbean stand? And are we making ourselves ready and prepared to receive that additional 1.5 billion visitors? So, Listening today to what this marketplace portends for, for us gives me hope that this future proofing of Caribbean tourism. I'm excited about multi destination tourism because it's part of that future. What COVID taught us is that competition is on per se, competition is now the new world. She taught us that we must compete, we must collaborate, do things together and achieve results because of convergence and coalitions. And so the private sector having indicated a while ago through President Madden that they are ready for building out the Caribbean product, a multi-destination product, now asks the question of the public sector for that ambition for us to begin to synchronize policies and to look at how to harmonize the different arrangements that need to come together to make the Caribbean tourism move to the next level. And multi-destination tourism does offer this great opportunity. But while we focus on that, normally for CHTA marketplaces, a gathering of buyers and sellers, and it's about doing business and making contracts and so on, which we're excited about that process. Yes. We are all eve equally excited about the thought leadership element of it. And this is giving a new look. How do we now bring our younger people into the mainstream, understanding tourism, recognizing that tourism is transformative and that it offers a real future for the Caribbean? And so I want to thank you for agreeing with me that Jamaica is the destination for, <laughs> for this year's uh, marketplace. Um, it is your last, and um, I don't know what history has its store, but certainly we want to make this the best. And uh, you have my full commitment, commitment of the Jamaica Tourist Board, and of course the government of Jamaica to make this one the best one. But it would be a little uh, remiss of me if I engage this moment without 
pointing to the fact that Caribbean tourism growth has really caught the attention of the world. And in our own particular case in Jamaica, we're particularly proud, I must say, of the level of growth that we have had post-COVID. And um, normally we talk about 2019 as being the benchmark. Mm -hmm. We have changed that. Mm -hmm. 2023 is a new benchmark for Jamaica's tourism. Because last year, we broke two important barriers. We brought 4 million people to the country and we earned 4 billion US dollars. And so the good news is that that trajectory continues, even against odds, some of which you have been reading about. <laughs> but um, we were able in the first two months of the year to bring 1 million visitors to Jamaica and earn $1 billion. That is a record that has never happened in the history of Jamaica. And, uh, Just to break it down, in fact, 611,642 stopover visitors to date for the year, and 389,390 cruise visitors. And that is a 7% increase in the case of stopover for the year, and a whopping 29% increase for cruise. But the big news for us is that our earnings at 1 billion is up 8.8% for last year. This portends to the projections that we made that Jamaica will achieve 5 million visitors by 2025 and earn $5 billion. Congratulations to the team for the great work that you have been doing. Congratulations to the JHDA and to the Tourist Board, of course. But in closing, I want to say a big congratulations to CHDA for putting together what is going to be the best, and I'll insist on that, <laughs> the best marketplace in history. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Minister, for those kind words. And we know we have had various successful marketplaces in our 42 history and all of them have had a place in our books right so we're definitely looking forward to it um i would like to recognize on the uh joining us in the room as well um permanent secretary jennifer griffith uh, director of tourism uh, donovan white and as we proceed uh, with our next next remarks we would like to invite our partners from the Jamaica Hotel and Tourist Association, Mr. Robin Russell, president of the JHTA, and acknowledge as well Camille Needham, executive vice president. Robin, over to you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, it, is, it is impossible to speak after the CHTA president. But it's even more impossible to speak after the world tourism minister. <laughs> so I will just say ditto. <laughs> um, but I will just say that we've been tasked with, with executing some of the, the work behind the CHTA marketplace this year. And the, when, when it first started, we were giving all these stories of how great Barbados did last year and that we had to do better and we had to really showcase what Jamaica had to offer. And let me just say, I would like to thank the team, Elena and her team, who have been working tire tirelessly with Peter and the JHDA and Donovan in making this a remarkable experience. It is going to be the best CHDA that has ever happened. And Jamaica is committed to this, right, Mrs. Neither. I mean, this is <laughs> and Greg, <laughs> and we are just pledging our support, and we're looking forward to a most excellent THD. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Robin, for those words. And we appreciate the collaboration of all of the partners locally through JHDA, JTB, and others as well. Um, we invite those that are joining us on the Zoom link to post any questions on the Q&A chat. We also have some followers 
us on Facebook Live. You're welcome to post your questions. We'll try to get them as much as possible. And if for some reason we're unable to get through all of them, we will respond accordingly um, afterwards. Uh, this first question, I will ask um, Nicola to provide a little bit of an overview, maybe expand a little bit with regards to the multi-destination aspect of that has been incorporated into the media trip at Marketplace and how did the opportunity to visit Cayman Islands and the Dominican Republic arise? I know you made a little bit of reference, but if you can expand a little bit more. The issue of um, multi-destinational travel, as you said, has been an ongoing conversation. Minister Bartlett has led that as, long, as well as Minister Bryan from Cayman in his role as CTO and as my role as president of CHD. This has been something that we have been discussing. You know, How do we ensure that this happens? This is such an opportunity for persons. And I, also, I always say, when you say you have been to the Caribbean and you tell me I've been to one or two islands, you haven't really been to the Caribbean until you can tell me about five, six, seven, eight, nine, or 10. Because while the Caribbean has a lot of similarities, it has extreme fabulous diversity. And each Caribbean island offers its own distinct experience. So in all our discussions, we said, you know, we have to be show proof of the concept. And so this year we wanted to actually have um, five media, which we're starting with for this trip, actually experience that. And because we're having marketplace in Jamaica, we thought what better would it be than to incorporate visit the Dominican Republic and Cayman. As you know, um, we now have direct service from Domrep to Kingston, and we have service from Jamaica to Cayman, and it was almost a no-brainer. We thought it would give you really three very unique experiences, one with Dominican Republic having the Spanish elements and, and all of that culture, coming to Jamaica with our reggae and, and everything else that we have and are known for, and then going to Cayman, which is more a laid back, relaxed experience, and just really being able to showcase that diversity and how relatively easy it is to travel between. Most of us who go to Europe, when we're planning our trip, we're not going to one European country. We usually do two, three, or four because it's such a long haul. So we are definitely showing um, visitors who are looking at the Caribbean that you can have this kind of a 10 day experience, especially if you are coming long haul. Why not take advantage of seeing so much more of the Caribbean, a richer experience, so you can really now showcase and have bragging rights that you have actually come to the Caribbean. So they will arrive in Dominican Republic. They'll have their experience there. They'll be escorted by one of our representatives from the CHDA. Then they will come to Jamaica where they will participate in some of the activities at Marketplace, but also will be able to go out and experience the island and the destination. And then they will move on to Cayman for um, another two to three days of an experience. So we're very excited for that. Um, we are working with some other tour operators, both regional and international, to codify some of these travel itineraries. As I said, this is our first effort, but we're already in conversation about trips into the Eastern Caribbean and other destinations. We have had preliminary discussions with COPO as well, because they are also interested to codify some multi-destinational trips. So, we are hoping coming out of this marketplace, we'll see a lot more itineraries being published and presented for our international visitors to choose and to really be able to move between the Caribbean destinations. And as Minister said, and I'm sure he will comment on it, there are some things on the public sector side that need to be um, kind of ironed out. And I will let him speak more on that side of things, but we have been talking about that as a region. And I know it's a very strong and topic at CTU. So Minister, maybe you want to comment? So um, this is really music to my ears. Um, and just by way of record that Jamaica hosted in 2017, the first world conference of sustainable tourism development in the region, actually in the world. Mm -hmm. And out of that, we had the Montego Bay Declaration, which called for three things. One was for the establishment of um, a resilience and crisis management center, which mm -hmm. we have. The second was for multi-destination tourism, which we have been struggling with and we are looking mm -hmm. better today, but we'll speak about that in a minute. And third was to develop 
program for the small and medium tourism enterprise to mainstream capacity so that the 80% of tourism that they represent can be reflected in the returns that they get. Um, because we recognize the asymmetry there that only 20% of the returns from tourism go to the 80% to provide the experiences of tourism. Mm -hmm. So we've been working on that and we, we had a follow-up um, conference in 2019, January 2019 with the former president of Colombia, Uribe, uh, to look at the SMTEs. Out of that, Jamaica developed um, a whole credit program for SMTEs at our Exim Bank. And we have to date, and I'm proud to tell you, we have unlent $3 billion to small and medium enterprises in Jamaica, covering 438 projects. And that has helped a lot to mainstream and to, in fact, make the agricultural component of the CHTA's engagement um, in May useful because the Alex platform we developed, which is a digital arrangement to connect small farmers with hotels and the purveyors could buy from them online and then have the goods delivered. Uh, it's a whole game changer in terms of the capacity to retain more of the tourism dollar in the Caribbean destination. So we're very excited about that. But the problem for us has been for multi-destination now is how do we bring together the private sector and the public sector into an appreciation of the elements that are required to effect the multi-destination tourism strategy. And I'm happy that the private sector is leading the way in this because that's how it has to be. Um, and by building a product, um, meaning to say the hotels, the airlines, the tour operators come together to create a Caribbean product that can be marketed with a value and a price. Then we can say to the world, this is what it will cost you to have a rich multi-destination experience in Jamaica, and we're ready to serve it. But the public sector, the governments of the Caribbean have to develop the ambition to create the framework to enable this to happen. And what is required? We discuss the issue of movement, freedom of movement in the region. We discuss the issue of a Caribbean visa regime, similar to the Schengen visa regime of Europe. So that when you visit any one of the destinations, you become domestic to the others. To look at harmonizing the whole entry requirements for the region and to look at airspace rationalization to ensure that once you hit any of our Caribbean airspace, you are in the Caribbean. So you don't end up as an airline paying multiple rates for varying airspaces that you fly into to visit one island to the other. Then we have to look at the whole issue of how do we create a tariff arrangement that will enable um, a more accessible Caribbean region to the world. Um, certainly tourism is a driver of consumption. That's what we do, we consume at every step of the way. And every point of consumption means revenue for the countries. So if we are burned with heavy taxation ahead of our arrival, it then negates the opportunity for us to spend as much as we should spend. And so the logic of it is very clear. And so from a point of view of a public sector person, as minister, um, I have some work to do. But um, the CARICOM has to develop that ambition we truly open the Caribbean, create an open skies arrangement so that airlines from everywhere can come in. That's what is going to enrich us and enable us to build out a strong multi-destination tourism, which will benefit everyone. That's the good thing about it. So what the multi-destination tourism finally is doing for us is to expand the market of the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. So airlines can look to coming to 33 million 
people rather than three million injured. Right. And so they could build out their itineraries against that, but also they could look at the whole uh, principles of hub and spokes so that they could know that there'll be feeder arrangements that can happen from Cayman to Jamaica, from Barbados to Jamaica, from St. Lucia to Jamaica. And they land here in Jamaica, and I'm using Jamaica because that's my metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> they land here in Jamaica, and then they don't have to run around and um, incur additional costs for landing fees all over the place. They can land here and they fill their planes and go back because we are fed mm -hmm. from the rest of the region through interline arrangements mm -hmm. with the regional carriers. So mm -hmm. this is a great opportunity. And I'm closing by saying it is a bigger opportunity now for investment on the supply side. And I'm not going to preempt my budget presentation. <laughs> so I won't tell you any more about the supply side mm -hmm. strategies that we have. But this is where it is. The wealth of tourism is on the supply side. Thank you for that, Minister. As we were speaking, as you were speaking, um, one of my colleagues sent me a note to say, remember to mention that Inter-Caribbean Airways just launched direct flights connecting St. Lucia and Jamaica. And Jamaica right? So again, we are seeing it happen in real time. Yeah. <laughs> Vanessa, Patrick. Yes, thank you very much, um, Nicola, and, and also actually robbing in his capacity as, as a hotelier and one of our supplier stakeholders at Marketplace. What's the value from a travel supplier perspective, right? There is a lot of business that's generated at Marketplace, but it's also an opportunity to connect with new and existing tour operators and buyers. So we would appreciate uh, some brief remarks from you, Nicola, switching your hat as a supplier and uh, Robin as well from your perspective. Well, being a supplier, which is basically, we are the ones who are selling the tourism experience. So the buyers are coming to partner with us in order to sell to the visitors who are looking to see where they should travel. One of the best things I think that happens at Marketplace is not only do you get an opportunity to meet with your current partners and to discuss strategy, um, you can look at what's coming up for the next season, a year in advance, and you can have real-time discussions because, you know, yes, we can do things on Zoom, but nothing beats being able to sit in front of someone and truly watch body language and understand the dynamics of what is happening in their business as well as in your business. It's also a great opportunity to network, uh, but more so importantly, because we have continued to focus on bringing in new buyers, it's a great opportunity to get new business. Um, one of the things that we see as the Caribbean continues to grow, as I mentioned, we're looking at somewhere in the region of 59,000 new hotel rooms and every day between Minister Bartlett and his tourism partner, or the minister throughout the region, they add new investors and new hotel rooms. We are seeing that there's a tremendous demand worldwide to do business in the Caribbean. As again, because we came out of the pandemic as one of the fastest, probably the, the fastest recovering region, um, international players are really looking to invest in the region and put new rooms into the destinations. And with that, it means that we as suppliers have to be able to find new distribution channels, new partners, for us to be able to maintain our occupancy, maintain our average daily rate. Nobody wants to see the pie grow and you lose revenue or you lose rate. So it's when we have a forum like Marketplace and we can bring in new buyers, Instead of me as a supplier having to fly to Europe and fly to every country around the world trying to find new partners, bring them into one place. And so you cannot have an opportunity to meet persons that maybe otherwise you would have never met and to sign contracts and to have again that face to face. Because, yes, people say, you know, our trade shows too relevant. Everything can be done online. But I still strongly believe in face to face interaction. We're seeing companies pull back into hybrid or bringing people back into offices because there is value in being able to sit down and negotiate face-to-face -face with someone. And so I think um, that's what Marketplace affords us, an opportunity, but really it gives you a chance to pitch your story, to be able to really be genuine and honest to the person you're doing business with, and they can be genuine and honest with you. And you can see you know, their movements on the ground. So for me, that has been successful. Um, I always participated in Marketplace and JPEX, uh, which is our Jamaican version of that. And it has always brought value to me. There's not one year that I haven't signed new business. 
Dito. <laughs> um, as a, as that's a name of my that's a pet name of my son, you know. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, as a smaller hotelier, when when we first opened, it was impossible to speak to everybody. It was just too expensive to travel all over the world to to access these different persons in different offices. And forums like Marketplace, forums like JPEX offer you that opportunity. You are able to interact with the very top of the food chain in every aspect of the business, from tour operators to, to basic travel agents. Everybody that wants to do business comes to Marketplace. And especially, I would say again, for small enterprises, it is the probably the only opportunity you're going to get unless you're spending big money to interact with these persons. So we look forward to it. And like you, Nicola, from opening my hotel, I have been involved in CHTA, Marketplace, and JPEX because that is how we drive business to the hotel. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Robin. Thank you, Nicola. Thank you, Minister, as well. We appreciate everyone that has joined us uh, today. As a reminder for uh, those colleagues that are joining us, please remind your colleagues and peers across the region and across the world that the session is available for future viewing at uh, on our Facebook channel. Uh, for the media that is joining us as well, if you have a desire or interest for quotes from the panelists or any additional questions that you may have, please contact our colleagues at Marketplace Excellence and they will relay the information um, through the appropriate representatives uh, from the organizations that are joining us this morning. At this point, we just want to not only appreciate and thank the time of our panelists, but as a reminder, we wanna thank the sponsors of Caribbean Travel Marketplace. We still have sponsor opportunities available at the event. Uh, for any information, please visit CaribbeanTravelMarketplace.com for further information about the event, Caribbean Travel Forum, the schedule of events, and the details on, on speakers, and sessions will be posted as information becomes available over the next few weeks. Registration is open for suppliers and buyers and for our marketing and technology partners as well. Details on special rates on the host hotels is available on the site. We are also adding further hotels to the list. We really appreciate your opportunity today for those that are joining us. And if you want to take advantage of the opportunity and register now, please use the QR code that's on the screen. Minister Bartlett, thank you so much for joining us and taking time today to address our audience across the world and across the Caribbean. Robin, thank you so much. Nicola, thank you so much for joining us today. And we look forward to seeing all of you in Montego Bay in close to nine weeks. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any, oh, any local questions? Any, any